Hello there. So today we're talking about the Dunu X Giz Audio DaVinci, known affectionately in some circles as Binky. I have no idea why. <laughs> So this is a $300 hybrid IEM that many of us audio nerds are excited about because its sound profile is generally in line with a very good trend for IEM tunings that's developed in recent times. And there are many folks wondering if this could be the new king at its price point, at the $300 price point. And so in this video, we're gonna find out if it lives up to that hype in practice. So let's dive right in and talk about it. Now, just as we get going here, a quick disclaimer, this unit was provided by Hi-Fi Go for review at Timmy's request. Big shout outs to Hi-Fi Go and Timmy for sending this in. Timmy's the one who did the collab. As always, I do not get paid to say anything in particular about these products. I do not get to keep them and all thoughts and opinions here are my own. So why is this IEM important? Well, if you remember the recent critical collab, the Dusk, the one with the DSP cable, that product was controversial to say the least. With the Dusk, which is this here, you had effectively the good tuning, the Dusk default DSP tuning, locked behind the use of a USB-C cable, and that had a number of issues. Now, if you want the rundown on that IEM, we've done a video as well as an in-depth article on it. I'll link those both in the description. But the Dusk default DSP tuning has been almost universally praised, and by myself as well. It's just exceptional, particularly for its mid-range. And there's now a lot of interest in IEMs that have a similar sound signature. So they're not actually new IEMs, but they're ones like the High Senior Megafest, the Oracle Mark I, the Hype 4, and to a certain extent even in the high end, like the 64 Audio U6T. And the hype around those IEMs, and likely others, has been reanimated in part through the recognition that these IEMs are a great fit with a population average based response target. More on that later. But in short, for those who've been following the meta for IEM tunings, this is the direction that things are going. And in my view, this is a very good thing. And the DaVinci is the latest to follow this trend. And its key advantage over the Dusk default DSP is that the DaVinci isn't using DSP to achieve the tuning. So you don't need to use the controversial cable or you know do the EQ yourself. This is just all analog. But I'm also gonna say right now that the DaVinci is not in fact a perfect representation of this new tuning trend in IEMs and the critical dusk default DSP still does a better job of that. Instead, the DaVinci does a much warmer, bassier take on the concept, but we'll get there. Let's first talk about the thing and take a look at it. So the faceplate and the shell, it looks nice. It looks actually kind of like the aesthetic that you got on the box. And it does give me a DaVinci-esque vibe to it. I don't know really what makes me think of that, but it does sort of, if you think about it. The shell itself is a little bit on the large side, but mostly just for its thickness. The overall footprint surface area that sits in your ear is totally reasonable. It's similar in size to the Dunu Mirai. The nozzle is also a little bit on the large side. Personally, I don't have any issues, but if you can't handle thicker nozzles, this is something to be wary of. Uh, size matters. But I would say that the Duna Da Vinci, at least for me, it is more comfortable than the Dusk. And I didn't really have too much trouble with that one. Uh, but the DaVinci specifically is a bit more accommodating for this particular ridge in my ear, where the dusk does kind of like rub up against that, which I don't prefer, uh, but it's not like either of them are uncomfortable for me. And the cable, it's actually really nice with this one. Uh, it is a Dunu cable after all, and they do typically provide some pretty nice cables. This is no exception. And then the termination here, uh, it is modular, so you can swap it between Pentacon and 3.5 millimeter. Now, you also get a ton of different tips, which is nice. These tips don't work for me at all. Uh, like, for whatever reason, I can never get a seal with them. I don't really bother using them. I just go with one of the other ones, and the rest of them work just fine. As far as any tip rolling for different sound signatures is concerned, I actually measured a lot of them and found that the DaVinci doesn't really change that much with different tips. So I would just go with the one that ensures you have a good seal for the bass, and then you're, you're solid. Now, here's the impedance curve, and while most outputs will be fine, if you run this from a high output impedance source, you will change the frequency response substantially and for the worse. So I did test this actually with a high open impedance adapter. It's not, I don't recommend it. <laughs> But I should also note that the impedance is also a bit higher than usual for IEMs, but you still shouldn't have any trouble being able to run these. Dongles are fine. Okay, now let's talk about the sound. And here are the measurements done on the BNK5 and 28. And for IEMs, this is the system that you're gonna want to read for the most accurate results, especially in the bass, because this is the system that has the more accurate acoustic impedance. 
So here you can see both the raw and the calibrated results. If you're new to reading any of this, I'll leave resources in the description. But I always say there are many ways for things to sound bad, very few ways for things to sound good, and when they do, the response typically falls somewhere within the shaded area here. These boundaries have been lifted from the Harmon preference research. Now the key thing to note here for IMs is that this is using population average pinna effects for the calibration, since IMs bypass the outer ear, and therefore those effects need to be assumed. I did a whole video on this. If this sounds unfamiliar, be sure to watch that one, and then this will all make sense. Hopefully. It's a complicated subject, but hopefully it helps. In any case, you can see here that the Da Vinci, the Binky, it measures quite well. It's definitely bassy, with a substantial bass boost above what I think most people would consider neutral, and it also extends up in frequency a bit, a little too much for my taste, so for the bass rise. Uh, and I find that this tends to sort of mask the mid-range clarity a bit. And that's a shame because the mids are absolutely the star of the show with this IEM. This is some of the best mid-range tonality you can find around this price point, or really any price point. It's very similar to what you get with the Dusk Default DSP mid-range, and that's a huge plus. And then the treble is mostly solid, and I'm really nitpicking here, but I do wish the transition between the mid and upper treble was a bit smoother. Like, I find that that kind of mid treble dip is, it can sometimes make things sound a bit dark. Uh, and then you have that sort of upper treble zing. And I know I've complained about upper treble before, but I'm fine with there being a bit of a boost. I don't mind a subtle U-shape presentation. And certainly in this case, because of the bass boot, it kind of needs it. Like, it needs that extra little spice up there. But overall, I definitely still prefer the treble features of the Dusk default DSP over that of the Da Vinci here, even though things are pretty close. So I think if he'd been able to curb the upper treble by a few dB here, or you know have a smoother treble transition between the mid treble and the upper treble, it would be welcome. Even though I definitely wouldn't advocate for you know completely killing the upper treble, you know that that peak you see there. Um, in this case, I do think it is kind of a requirement given the bass presence. Now, unfortunately, tip rolling doesn't really change things, like I mentioned with this one. You may have some luck with flange tips, but I tried so many different tips, and even swapping to the small bore tips from the Megafest, which make a meaningful difference for that IEM, uh, the Da Vinci's response doesn't seem to be affected, and the only time that I did notice a substantial difference was with the coffee tips, and it just made things worse. So I don't recommend the coffee tips. In fact, I have yet to find an IEM where the coffee tips are good. Uh, so if you like the coffee tips, well, you're wrong. They're bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> if anything, it's all listeners' fault, and I'm going to invoice him for the $19 Canadian that I spent on them. So for the overall result here, I think it's quite good. And my criticisms, they are more nitpicks, but I do feel that the elevated bass presence kind of overshadows what is ultimately the best part about this IEM, that being the extremely well-balanced and well-voiced mid-range. And this is sort of the forever risk of increasing bass presence. Like, it can be fun to increase the bass presence, and yes, people do like a bass boost, but it can also come at a cost, and I think that's what we're seeing here with this one. So what I do with EQ is I shift the bass boost down a bit. I, you know, kind of downshelf the whole thing by a few dB, starting at around 200 hertz. And then I add a little bit of that sort of mid treble energy back to kind of smooth out that transition between the mid treble and upper treble. Then I also kind of reduce the upper treble a little bit. I'm not saying you need to do that with this one. It doesn't need EQ, but this is just sort of what I do for my preferred response. Now, for harmonic distortion, you get an elevated third and elevated fifth presence from the balanced armatures, which is typical for these types of configurations. Whether or not that is audible, it's unlikely. I'm going to go with unlikely. So this is totally normal. Okay, that is it for the objective performance. Now's the part where I tell you about how it sounds to me subjectively with music. So these are my descriptions of my experience here, not to do with acoustic properties. Now, like I was saying earlier, the mid-range is, in my opinion, the best part about this IEM. Um, it has a particularly natural presentation to instrument and vocal timbre in this range in particular. So it has none of the leanness or the harshness that you might find with Harman tunings, none of the shout. Uh, it's just smooth and natural and pleasant. That to me is my favorite part about this IEM. It just sounds natural in a good way for the mids and for the upper mids. I love it. For the sense of spaciousness, there's really not much to talk about with this. It isn't anything special, It's but it's also not claustrophobic or overly intimate sounding. But I do think that it can occasionally come across, again, a bit dark, given kind of like the overall tilt, and that can sometimes make things feel a little bit closed in, but I don't 
I don't get any sort of, you know, distinct lack of separation or anything with these. So for these intangibles, things sound mostly good with the Da Vinci, but I have two primary subjective criticisms, two key subjective criticism, you know what I mean. And both of them have to do with the bass. So number one is that the Da Vinci is not as clear sounding as it could be. And that's not to say it's not sufficiently resolving or detailed, it's actually fine for that. It's not blunted sounding in any means. There's a good sense of internal resolution. It's just dominated by the bass presence. And number two, as a result of the increased bass presence, it's not quite as hard hitting for the attack as what you get with the Dusk Default DSP and also other IEMs that are a little bit more linear in the bass. Like, flat out, the Dusk Default DSP is a noticeably punchier sound. It's a noticeably more dynamic and impactful sound, despite the fact that it has overall less bass presence. Now, to the Da Vinci's credit, I find this sound signature does a good job of balancing out brighter or more intense recordings. And electronic music also does really well with this one. So it's a bit of a give and take. And again, speaking personally for the music that I primarily enjoy, which is you know jazz, instrumental, acoustic music, that kind of stuff, I find that music does better with a bit more of a neutral presentation. And that's one where this IEM just doesn't do quite so well. It's like you're kind of just sinking into a warm bath of soup, thinking of like a nice cheese and broccoli soup that you're just kind of slowly melting into. I don't I don't like falling into soup. Just, I don't like it. <laughs> okay, so I know that I'm critiquing the bass a lot with this one. And again, this is probably more of a nitpick since lots of bass sounds like a good thing, right? But we have to realize is that this style of tuning can be particularly sensitive to bass level since you don't have that massive ear gain like what you get with Harman IE. And as soon as you have too much bass, it sort of drowns things out a bit, and that is soup-like. I'd critique the High Senior Megafest for exactly the same thing, just that the Megafest has a bit more treble presence throughout the ear gain, making it less of an issue. Hold up, future Andrew here. I was just editing this video, and it came to my attention by a certain someone that you can actually improve the Da Vinci's bass response if you find it to be overbearing by covering up the back bass port with FunTac, like I've done right here. You can use other kinds of putty, but in Canada we have FunTac. I'll show you guys here the measurements. This dramatically reduces the overbearing bass and gives it a bit more of a linear response throughout that range. And this allows some of the better qualities of the mid-range to come forward a little bit more clearly and cleanly. It's not ideal, it's not perfect, but it does bring forward that clarity that I found was missing when I was drowning in soup. So this actually substantially increases the value proposition of this product. I just want to caution you though that there is a chance that doing this by adding FunTac to the back of the IEM, uh, you could potentially get stuff stuck in the port. And it's not exactly an ideal solution, but it is something that can improve the clarity if that's what you care about. But okay, back to the previous Andrew. I'm sure he has other things to say. So let's now take a look at a few of those other IEMs that go for some of this new school style of tuning, which again, in my view, is a very good trend overall. So I'd say all of these, you know, I'd recommend them at their given price points. I just want to kind of rank them for you for how I see them. You may see them differently. So here's the DaVinci on its own. Uh, here is the Dusk Default DSP with the DSP cable, of course. So that's the intended tuning. Uh, you can see that they are quite similar for much of the response, but the Dusk Default DSP is a bit more restrained when it comes to the bass boost. And I feel that's probably the way to handle this kind of tuning. If I had my druthers, <laughs> that would be how I would handle this, this tuning. Uh, then there's the The Audio Hype 4, which is a fantastic IEM overall. It just has excess upper treble. And I won't say that it's outright better across the board than the Da Vinci. Uh, I just, yeah, the excess upper treble does get to me a bit with the Hype 4. And then here's the High Senior Megafest, all aboard the Hype Train for this one. Uh, this is with the small bore tips that come with it. And you can see that it has the same kind of bass presence as the Da Vinci, or very similar at least. The difference being, again, that it's got a bit more of that sort of ear gain and treble presence to balance things out. I think that that balance is important to keep intact. Overall, I'm going to rank the sound quality like this. For my personal subjective taste, yours might be different. In first place is actually the Dusk Default DSP. I still find this to be the best interpretation of the new school tuning. The caveat, of course, is that it's with a DSP cable or it requires custom DSP to achieve it. The analog tuning, I would actually rate below all of these. 
In second place, and it's a very close second, is the High Senior Mega Fest with the small board tips. The advantage with this one is that you don't need to use the poorly executed DSP cable that comes with the Dusk. The downside is that it's more expensive, considerably more expensive. In third place, I'm actually going to put the The Audio Hype 4. I would personally add one filter, like with EQ, to curb the upper treble. Um, but apart from that, it's really exceptional. And in fourth place, I'd put the DaVinci. And that's not to say the DaVinci is bad, because if you're a bass head, I feel you would put the DaVinci up there with the Megafest, and both of those ahead of the Dusk Default DSP. This is fairly straightforward stuff. So I think it's important to remember with all of these, uh, they are all aiming for what is, in my opinion, the most positive trend in IEM tunings, that being population average in JM1. As of posting this video, we're actually working on JM2, or basically the next evolution of this concept. Basically what we're doing is we're measuring the canal transfer function of the 5 and 2 8 so that our HRTF calibration can be a more precise fit with that part of the fixture that actually, you know, the IEMs actually interact with. Now, I don't expect things to change all that much, but we want to also see what the downstream effects are for the ear gain in general, if there are any. So if you're interested in the outcome of any of that, definitely stay tuned to what we're doing here. Uh, consider subscribing uh, because we will probably be releasing videos on some of this stuff and to give some more technical deep dives on all of this. But it's just encouraging to see that, you know, this trend has gained some traction. There's now a little bit of extra sort of theory anchoring this. And it's also like, if you look at some of the other targets that are out there, like the sound guys target, it's nearly identical. So like... This is this is all good stuff, in my opinion. And really, we're just trying to push things forward as best we can. So, in conclusion, do I recommend the Dudu X Giz Audio DaVinci? And I think when I do these videos, a lot of people expect the usual sort of hype and enthusiasm. And sometimes when I'm not, you know, jumping around all over the place or bouncing off the wall about a product, it gets interpreted as, oh, he doesn't actually like it. But in reality, I'm just a bit dead inside. So, listen to my words. There is no further interpretation. And with that in mind, yes, I absolutely do recommend the DaVinci. Specifically, I recommend it for those looking for a noticeably bass-boosted presentation or even for those looking for a U-shaped presentation. In general, at around this price point, I think this is probably the one to get unless you are particularly averse to that, you know, bassy kind of sound. And like I said, I still prefer the more neutral sound signature from the Dusk Default DSP. And if you're the kind of person who would use the USB-C cable or apply the EQ filters with other software like Equalizer APO or maybe with the Qtilix 5K, I do think it's worth spending a bit more to get the Dusk over the DaVinci. But of course, if you hated the fact that the good tuning for that IEM was locked behind the DSP cable, the DaVinci is currently the one to get again at this price point and I think a lot of people are going to like it especially for the base heads out there anyways that does it for this video as usual if you guys are interested in any of our deep dive articles that'll be up on headphones.com a uh, listener will actually be reviewing this one so that should be up uh, on the website soon for any of the measurements that we do those are all posted up on the headphone community forum and if you'd like to chat with me and other like-minded audio folks check out our discord also linked in the description below until next time I'll see you guys later